Hello and welcome to a cheeky midweek Magrathea Builder of Worlds. This is a Burrows and Badgers miniature conversion video. Yeah, I know. I've never done one of these before. Um, normally, of course, I'm known for making scenery uh, for all kinds of games. Mostly, I've got to confess now, Commander and Burrows and Badgers. Burrows and Badgers is definitely my thing. Um, and often in my videos, I'm only complaining about the painting of the, the things and the kind of like painting the models and that kind of thing. And the fact that sometimes I haven't got painting figures to go with the models that I've made, I want to play the games with. Well, <sighs> this time around, um, it's a little different. I'm into building worlds, hence the name of the channel. Um, but part of building worlds is also building the characters that live there. And uh, I kind of like come up with a, a new idea this week that I wanted to have a go at. If you are familiar with Burrows and Badgers and the uh, miniature designs of Michael Lovejoy and Oath, uh, Oath Miniatures, you'll know that it's a really, really nice range of figures. And each one pretty much is a joy to paint. Some people like some more than others, but on the whole, every single figure in the range is a winner. I don't know how many there are now. There are probably 130 plus figures in the range. Uh, and the cool thing about Burrows and Badgers, of course, is the fact that it's uh, a game that has factions that you only pay lip service to. So any figure can go with any figure. Problem for Burrows and Badgers is the fact that it's designed by Michael Lovejoy. Uh, he makes all the miniatures, which means his output of miniatures is... Uh, kind of like limited to the amount of he can sit down and sculpt in a year along with also writing rules and painting figures and doing all the other stuff he's got to do to run a company because I'm pretty sure and uh, Michael if you're watching this correct me if I'm wrong Oath Swarm Miniatures is pretty much just Michael and his uh, lovely wife Joe, um, which means that they have to do absolutely everything to run their business. It also means that um, unlike the big guys in the uh, um, the war games world, the, the workshops and the warlords of this world, um, Oathsworn uh, are a little company and to get a new set of figures out, the best way for them to do that is often through Kickstarters. Now, I haven't bought every single figure of theirs through Kickstarters. Um, I've only bought into the last three or four Kickstarters, three Kickstarters I think. To know um, because that's when I discovered the game but I have got every figure in the uh, barrels and badges range and um, if you've watched this channel before you'll also know that uh, I have got most of them painted in fact there is a new Kickstarter on the horizon from Oathsworn uh, which I'm very excited about because it could almost be like Michael Lovejoy is making figures personally for me this time round. There are three sets of figures going to be in this Kickstarter and they could all fit brilliantly into our Lunden and Benfleet campaign. So thanks for that Mike. Can't wait to see him. Now the thing about that is the fact that uh, I'm determined to have every single one of my figures that I've got for Burrows and Badgers painted before the next Kickstarter uh, I'm hoping to get it before it's launched I certainly haven't all done before the next Kickstarter figures come in uh, although their Kickstarters are really short you know it's only a few months between Kickstarter finishing and figures coming out unlike so many other companies where you're waiting like years um, so earlier this week I sat down with all the figures that I have left from um, Oathsworn and other companies as well because B&B is a miniatures agnostic game. I mean if you can get Oathsworn figures I totally recommend you get them because they're so great but other people do use other figures too and that's fine. Um, and I got out all of the figures that I've got for B&B that aren't painted and they, they numbered 45. Um, so I laid into them. Uh, by Wednesday, uh, I got these figures out on the Monday, uh, by the Wednesday I had painted 13. Very pleased with myself too. Um, they're here, look. Those are the Oathsworn ones I've done. And these are from Punga Miniatures. Sadly not easy to get hold of at the moment because Punga's a Russian company and hey, you know, there's a war on. Um, sorry, special military operation. Fuck it, it's a war. Um, but, uh, then I got a bit sidetracked because I'm also making a scenery video at the moment, uh, another thing for uh, Ben Fliot, uh, and I was really into that. And then I got sidetracked by these painting these figures, and there was one figure in particular that was causing me uh, a problem. It's a fantastic model. Um, it's this. This isn't my one. This one belongs to my mate Ted. Um, it's great. It's a, a beaver priest, high priest, priest, angry looking bloke, great big mitre, bizarre looking kind of like, well. It, religious symbol really but being used wielded as a double-handed weapon um, he's got 
uh, sensors hanging from, from kind of like sashes and all sorts of stuff, flowing cloaks, loads of action in this model. The problem with only having a limited range of figures, and I said those sort of B and B figures, it's a pretty big range, 130 odd, is the fact that um, there are limited sculpts of different species of creature. Which means that if you play regularly with a group of people, the chances are lots of them have got the same figures. Uh, I run a, a campaign for Burrows and Badgers, which involves eight players at the moment, um, and a lot of the same figures crop up in different people's war, game, uh, war bands. Uh, that's the way of it. Um, and uh, this is, like I said, this is this is Ted's Beaver Priest. Pretty sure a couple of the other guys have got this model as well and have painted it and they look really nice. Uh, probably John Penny. John, have you got one of these? I don't know. Um, he's painted some amazing looking figures in these last few months. Uh, big uh, nod of the head to uh, Mr. Penny. Um, but, uh, yeah, my one isn't painted. It's kind of like blank and needs uh, some work and I've decided that actually what might be quite cool is if I had set about this um, not just with a paintbrush but with some clippers and a Stanley knife as well. The cool thing about the massive beasts uh, in the Oswald range is they're made from resin not from uh, uh, metal which means uh, I think they're going to be easier to work with. So I sat down the other day and thought about what I wanted and I decided that oh, wouldn't it be cool if I'd, I'm making all this Ben Fliot stuff and this guy doesn't really, he's a beaver which is perfect for a village in the marsh but he looks a little bit overdressed for slopping around in a village in the marsh and I thought what would be cool is if I turned, took this character uh, and turned this into a priest for a marshy village, a priest of the god Mananan. Mananan? Manan. I don't know. Uh, I can't remember what it is. I've got it written down somewhere. Anyway, the kind of the Celtic god of, of the sea and water. Um, what would he look like? So I decided that the mitre had to go and some other bits as well. And I started to think about sitting about it with a Stanley knife, which is kind of brave because I can't remember how much these things are. They're about 12 quid each. So laying into a 12 quid model just without a plan doesn't necessarily seem like a great idea and I know several people kind of sucked air through their teeth at me and went oh this is going to be interesting but I hadn't done this kind of video before and um, I wasn't planning to I just thought oh you know what actually I'm doing this I'm gonna have a crack at this I might as well kind of like film it as I've gone along so I did uh, I've made the uh, um, uh, the film as I've converted the miniature I would be pretty good because I've converted the miniature I've painted it and it's all there done and ready to you so uh, check this out you got to go back a couple of days timey wimey wibbly wobbly thing <laughs> So this is the Burrows and Badgers, um, beaver, kind of priest, angry looking fella, um, from the last Kickstarter, which I haven't painted, I haven't done anything with yet. Uh, other guys um, in my group have already painted him. Ted uses him big time in his warband, so, uh, and yeah, as much as I love all these range of figures, this is a great model, I don't see any point in just painting him up to be like all the others so what I've decided to do is do some conversion work on him um, here we are so my plan is to make a priest of Manan the god of the sea for Benfliot I'm gonna make a temple and I'm gonna make this into a priest of the god of the sea the only problem is first of all we've got this enormous mitre that I want to do something with and I want to change the weapon as well probably do something about these hanging sensors as well So um, I haven't done a lot of chopping with this kind of resin I could be about to mess up a perfectly good 10, what, 10, 12 quid model, I don't know um, but I'm going to set about him with a standing knife and then some green stuff to see what I can come up with uh, wish me luck I'll give you an update later haha <laughs> Right, and so um, this sensor came off pretty easy down this side here. I'm quite liking this resin. I'm going to trim that up, that'll be all right. Uh, and then I'm going to try and work out this one. This one's a bit more stuck in the cloak, though it's going to be a bit more difficult. But I'll uh, work some of that away. Might have to replace some of the green stuff. And then we're going to have to do something about this bloody great big hat, which I don't think is going to come off very neatly indeed. Um, and also the top of this. I think I'm going to end up making this pole arm into some kind of harpoon. I think that'll be a suitable uh, or trident. I wonder if I can find a trident. I don't know. But um, let's see how we do. A trident would be great, but if not, a, a kind of harpoon of some description would be cool. But I don't need all this guff up here. So I'm pretty much going to cut all that off, making sure I don't cut off above 
uh, the finger here. Let's see how we go with that. Sharp knife, sharp blade, brand new. Don't slip, don't stick in you. Here we go. Okay, so taking out this other sensor, not as neat, it didn't come out in all in one piece. Um, I still might be able to salvage it though. I don't know, use that little bit of something on oh, a necromunda model or something like that. Still quite cool. Um, cut the top off, which I'm beginning to regret now because I could have kept that as a um, part of a spear top. Never mind. Uh, so this is where we're at. Now I've got to tackle the mitre. Now, the mitre, I'm coming off this side, the head's fine. I can rebuild a bit of the head there. It's going to be really tricky around the hand, around the spear shaft. I don't know how I'm going to make that work yet. We'll see. However, so far it hasn't been too difficult cutting this resin. So um, you never know what's possible. This is not going to be pretty or come off neatly though. So I'm just going to go at this with a pair of clippers and a knife and carve it away. There's no way I'm getting off all the all these gubbins all in one piece that I can think of. So, wish me luck. Tally ho. So I have cut the symbol cut the the, the uh, symbol off the uh, front of the mitre might be able to save that and use that for a model somewhere else um, of course not quite a nice little piece of iconography that <laughs> currently uh, the mitre now looks a bit flat so I'm just going to cut into this and cut this away because I've just got to go now I've committed myself to this uh, I can see myself having to do a bit of rebuilding on top of his head unless I can think of a, a brilliant kind of like um, piece of headgear for a priest of the sea some kind of fish maybe oh, no that look crap um, okay so um, yeah might just be plain I'm going to see what state it's in when I've got the rest of this cut off well, now we're going for this really tricky little bit just inside here it'd be great if I could cut this out note uh, the bleeding of the finger where even with a sharp blade I managed to still stick it myself. I am going to leave <laughs> got blood, blood for the blood god on the back of the uh, the beavers. Going to have to be washed off. And at the minute, I've got a very flat top, which is going to need some work. Either I put a hat on him, or I take it down a little bit and then build it back up with some green stuff and have a go at um, putting fur texture on it. Let's see in a minute. Okay, so successfully carved out the. Uh, gap here between the spear shaft that's in there I've lost a bit of detailing on the fur trim there and as we can see he's got a really flat head um, which uh, is going to need some attention uh, green stuff at the very least but I am going to go and have a route around in some bits boxes I am going to for the first time in ages go digging through the cack because I'm thinking there's some kind of secret, some kind of secret, a skull, steel, an iron skull cap would work there. It doesn't need to be anything grand. This is a priest of a temple out on the uh, uh, coast, and he wears a steel skull cap to protect his head when the boat's tacking. You know, protect his head from the beam and the, the boom and the like. So um, that's the next bit. Um, I'm going to carve in the odd line that I've got missing now out of here. Uh, so I can come up with them. I'm going to base him up, I think. Oh, I've got to cut off the nubbin. I either decide to put a uh, spear head on the top, but I think actually I'm going to carve off the round part on the bottom here and uh, replace that with a harpoon so it's kind of like stood. So he could be stood on the side of a boat about a harpoon, a bloody great big fish. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Um, so far, then, the cutting of the resin, not too bad. Now we're going to make good. Well, you remember these bits of, I don't know, grudge fencing or something from Warhammer Fantasy Battle, I uh, can't remember, insert edition here, uh, Battle for Skull Pass it must have been, um, <laughs> and it took me a couple of minutes to give it a cack, and I'm thinking actually that I could take the, this spang and helm, this helmet off the top of this here, that might fit on. Perfectly on there, what do you think? I'll give that a go, then I might only have a little bit of fur work to do with green stuff. This could be cool! No, this is where I've got to uh, apply my helmet. 
Um, which is all right. I've made mail, which you can't see very well because of the lighting in here, see? I decided as a fisherman, a priest of Manan, a tripod. Decided as a priest of Manan, a trident was uh, going to be the weapon of choice with a vicious hook on the other end. Made a put, added a belt going around somebody's goal. I've got a knife hanging on here, uh, and I've gone and dug out through some cack again, and I have found a couple of other bits of stuff of Iden the Deepkin. It's actually a fishing net and some bottles that are going to hang on him. But I think will look pretty cool as well. I like the idea of him having a fishing net of some description. Um, I've put reinforcement over the top of the helmet, which isn't great. I'm going to work on a little bit more to try and make it better shape. But I'm pretty pleased with this. I reckon by the time, and a nasal on the helm as well, so uh, protect his face too. That's going to take a bit more smoothing and sorting out, but um, and I might be filming this again in the daylight tomorrow when the focus is better. But let's give it a go. Okay, so I've put my eleven tail on the back of this helmet. And nasal and reinforcement straps with green stuff. Now I'm just trying to get a bit happier with the shape of the green stuff. I'm no expert with green stuff. I need to practice more. No, it's not bad. I reckon it'll paint up okay. What I need to do now is leave this overnight. Let it set. Now we'll have a look in the wall and see what, how it actually turned out. Right, so this is um, what I've done. Uh, I have started ahead, gone with that helmet, and I've green stuffed some reinforcement bars on it uh, and a nasal, uh, and then some mail around the back of the head. I'm not great with green stuff, but it works for me. Um, the weapon I've completely changed. I uh, thought a uh, priest of Manan should have a trident you know fishy kind of thing but I also like the idea of having a whacking great big hook on the back end of it for collecting pulling things out of the water with um, so this is suitably brutal looking uh, points for knowing where the tripod head came from um, then uh, I added a belt with a, a knife and some bottles the knife god I can't remember whether that's old school goblin or something like that uh, one fancy battle and then some bottles from an Ideneth Deepkin sprue because I went digging through the cack and um, on this side as well a net from uh, Ideneth Deepkin sprue as well because I thought that's kind of appropriate because he's the fisher of beasts so this is uh, Brother Biofa uh, which is old English for beaver and um, I'm going to uh, get him painted and think I need to do something to this part of the spear shaft here because it's a bit smooth compared to that woody bit there I might just take it down a little bit but otherwise I need to uh, undercoat him and get him painted and um, as part of my drive to finish the figures from the last Kickstarter so I will, I'm aiming to get every single Oathsworn figure painted um, I'm nearly there I've only got a handful left to do so I'm this guy was causing me problems because I just didn't fancy painting a priest the way everybody else had everybody had got one so I'm not going to bore you with the paint details we'll just have a look at him when he's finished and it's that brilliant bit about a primer that takes away all the individual pieces and makes it look like one model Okay, let's get this bad boy painted up. And there we go. 
I got a bit distracted whilst making the fighting pit. And I ended up converting my oath sworn beaver priest. And I've now turned it into Brother Beofa Priest of Mananan. The priest of Benfliot, a village in the marsh. So I've got to say, I'm rather pleased with him. Yeah, it's a fairly basic paint job. But actually, we can seal the features nicely. Whacking great with trident. Helmet with nasal. Mail kind of worked out alright. Still got to do more work with green stuff to get better at that. Knife and bottles at one side. Fishing net on the other. He's pretty cool. I just so happen to have Ted's beaver next to it. It's quite interesting how um, changing which direction the weapon's pointing changes the kind of dynamics of the model to some extent. <laughs> Never really considered that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm pleased to have done that. Well worth the time and effort. In fact, having made that helmet like that, I could see myself making a whole little force of these guys. Great big pole arms and the like. I mean, I'm not going to, because they're kind of... I don't know, can't remember how much per model. Are they 12 quid a model? I don't know, but it's pretty cool. But I'm really pleased with that. <laughs> he looks kind of cross. He's going after one big fish. Nice. Oh no, I'm going to have to make a temple for him now. So there you go. That is my converted Burrows and Badgers beaver. B and B and B. Um, working with resin turned out all right. Um, I'm not great with working with green stuff. I've got to do it more and I've got to work with it. And I always love people who can give me tips because, frankly, sculpting is not really my thing. I think what I've done with the helmet and the mail on the back works. Certainly works enough for me. Um, it certainly looks really different uh, compared to the... Um, the original model and uh, he looks a bit more scummy and a bit more suitable for slopping around in a marsh now of course i'm going to have to build him a temple of his own right in the middle of benfield village in the marsh so but that ain't going to happen straight away because i'm going to do some drawing and some thinking about it first of all but watch this space that little beaver is going to end up with his own temple in another magrathea build a worlds video thanks for watching